All right, what's going on, you guys? It's Resto, and today we're going to be discussing the 19 Twink Warrior. Uh, in today's video, we're going to go over the gear, um, the best in slot choices, along with the alternatives that you're going to be using until you get those best in slots. I'm also going to be going over the talents, um, the typical builds that you're going to be using throughout your battleground experiences. Uh, I'm also going to go over a little tips and tricks for the warrior, um, kind of make your guys' PvP a little bit smoother and just to kind of help you guys out in general. Um, without further ado though, let's get right into the guide. Alright, so this video was requested by one of you guys. Um, it's like I tell you guys at the end of every video, if you guys have a class that you guys want to see next, go ahead and drop that in the comment section below and I will do my best to get to it as soon as possible. Um, I bet on a delay on this one, uh, real life caught me up and it's been doing all kinds of nonsense. So yeah, um, so without further ado, let is get right on into this. So we have the lucky fishing hat, um, just like how I did it in the rogue video. You aren't able to get this until phase four, but I am going to show you and tell you guys about the alternatives that you guys can use um, instead. So don't stress out. Um, to start things off, we're gonna go to lucky fishing hat, get this from the fishing extravaganza um, within strangle throwing veil. This doesn't come out till phase four. So if you guys aren't watching this, um, in phase four and you guys are watching this coming up into phase two you're gonna be getting the green tinted goggles from engineering that's gonna be your alternative until you can get the lucky fishing hat um, moving on to the necklace we're gonna go for the scouts medallion um, this as well comes from phase two you have to get honored with the or song outriders um, pretty simple to get it's about 10 rep per cap about 150 Per win so if your team's on a winning streak that's about 55 wins in total 9k rep into Naya uh, into honored for the Warsong Outriders will get you a nice little necklace um, pretty much every twink is going to be wearing the scouts medallion so scouts medallion the lucky fishing hat and then the PvP rings along with this these shoulders are going to be amongst every twink that you see those are going to be the kind of best in slot for everyone um, anyways, moving on to the shoulders, these are the Tel Bar Mantle. Um, you get these by doing a small little quest chain through the Wailing Caverns. It's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure those of you who've been leveling um, to 60 have eventually came across this shoulder or just know about it in general. Um, very simple to get. You know, not really hard. All you gotta do is kill the last boss in Wailing Caverns, get the quest, and then kind of carry on from there. Um, moving on to the neck. Or not the neck, the cloak. Going with the sentry cloak. Um, but this cloak is going to have five resistance on this. Um, the reason why I'm doing this instead of armor, because you guys are going to be going against a lot of casters as a warrior. Um, I just have this hunch. You could make a second sentry cloak and get plus 70 armor on it. There's nothing wrong with that. I just recommend going plus five all resistance on it. It's nice to have that resistance um, compared to plus 70 armor. Plus 70 won't make that much of a difference. Um, there's two different uh, kind of ways that you can play a warrior. It's a shield and one hand and then a two hand. I will be showing you guys both that you're going to be using. But if you guys are going to be using two hands, rock the sentry cloak with plus five resistance. And if you guys are going to be using the shield, you're going to go for the sentry's cape of the bear. Um, reason being is because with the strength, you guys are building off... Um, block damage so it's increases the amount of damage that can be blocked um, with a shield this is why I go with the sentry's cape of the bear when I'm rocking my shield um, for when you guys want to do with that build but when you guys are going with the two-hander um, go with agility just like the rogue it improves your attack power with ranged weapons it improves the chance to um, score a critical strike with all weapons and increases the armor and a chance to dodge attacks um, mainly as a warrior you're going to be a dps warrior um, hardly ever are you gonna main the um, one hand and shield um, but you can rock that build there's nothing wrong with that i have seen that before so if you guys want to rock that um, like i said use this cloak instead Going on to the chest, we're going to go with the Black and Defy's armor. Um, this is going to be a cross for both Alliance 
and horde um, i know you guys have the tunic of westfall on alliance that is not the case when it comes to warriors you guys are going to want to stack some of that strength and agility in between um, if you don't plan on using your uh, shield and uh, one hand at all which i don't know why you would completely discontinue that or whatever you want to say um, you can go with tunica westfall for that pure agility but i highly recommend that you make this your main um main piece the black and defy armor with plus four stats um with this enchant is very expensive so make sure you guys are saving up a lot of gold for that to get your mats in um people are starting to get this now so you guys are able to ask around for the plus four i know some people are being scummy about it um making people pay a little extra for this but if you guys want to wait um, you can use the plus 100 um, enchant on your chest instead until you're able to get enough gold for the plus 4 enchants and have a guildy hook you up for free. That way you're not paying tax. Um, moving on to the bracers, we're going with the steel clasp bracers with plus 9 stamina. Uh, this is a horde only uh, bracer. For the alliance, you guys are going to go for the beetle clasp. Um, these are actually, in my opinion, better than the steel clasp. Granted, you're missing one stamina, one spirit, but I'd rather have two agility over one stamina, one spirit. So, once again, Alliance, congrats on you. You got gear advantage. So, those are going to be the bracers that you guys will be rocking for your warriors. Um, put plus nine stamina on it, regardless of which one that you're using. Um, you guys are going to want that stamina increase. Moving on to the gloves, we're going to be using the Thorbe uh Thor Thorbias gauntlets or Thorbas. I do. I cannot pronounce this word for the life of me, and I still can't. It's been all these years. Um, but you're gonna want to rock these gloves. Um, there really is no alternative for it. If you guys can't afford the Thorbias gauntlets, then I guess you can go with anything of the bear and get four, uh, four out of four on your gloves. You could rock that until the Thorbias gauntlets are available. But typically, you're gonna be running this um, all the time. You really don't need an alternative. They should be pretty cheap. Um, I want to say like 20 gold max, so I shouldn't have an issue affording these at all. Um, if you guys are a farmer and you guys like to farm your gear rather than buy it, this is an easy farm. I know this is a common drop within Shadowfang Keep, so go ahead and farm that. These are going to be your best in slot gloves for your warrior. Obviously, slap 15 agility on that. Any DPS class can be 15 agility because that enchant is absolutely nuts compared to everything that you guys can get. Um, but moving on to the belt. We're going to get the Cobron's Grasp. This is by far the best out of any belt you can get for a warrior. It's got the plus eight strength and the three agility. This is obtainable through Wailing Caverns. Um, Cobran to the left. Real simple to get. Real common drop. Um, same with your pants that you're going to be getting as well. The leggings of the Fane. So these two, just keep farming that same guy and eventually both will drop. Easy drop. Warriors are pretty easy to gear, but you guys do got some funky gear to go for in terms of uh, your weapons and your bracers and whatnot. So it's not like a rogue where it's real simple to get. Warriors are they're kind of bit tricky um, in terms of gearing and in terms of obtaining that gear as well. Um, but you're going to put the plus 100 Librum onto these pants. Same with the helmet, the plus 100 Librum, same thing. Um, it's the Librum of Constitution, I believe it's called. So you're going to get that, obviously get the mats for it, make sure you guys have the gold to convert everything um, and help your person that's going to be doing this for you out. And you're going to be rocking these. Moving on to the boots, we're going to go with the silver linked foot guards. Um, minor speed increase, obviously no questions asked. Minor speed increase is going to be on every single twink that you make. This speed increase is just clutch, it's huge, it's beneficial in every single way. It's just the only way to go is minor speed increase. If you're really going anything else, you're crippling yourself. Um, you'll kind of find that out in the long run if you choose to not use minor speed increase. But rock this. Um, Silver link foot guards. Get that stamina in there. Get that strength in there. You're pretty much set to go. Uh, moving on to the rings. Uh, the rings. Uh, you're going to go with the Seal of Savannas for the Horde. This is a quest that you do for Shadowfang Keep. You unlock this at level 18, I believe, and you get that from the Flight Master. That's the closest to Shadowfang. So you're going to go ahead and get this quest, do it. Um, if you guys are worried about XP, just have a 19, or not 19, have a 60, run you through it. Um, that way you're not getting any XP from the mobs. Knock that out. For the Alliance, you guys are getting the Seal of Rin. Obviously, it's way better than Seal of Savannah, in my opinion, um, excluding the stamina increase. 
Silvrin is going to be your guys' option for the Alliance. So, Sil of Sylvanas for Horde, Sil of Rin for the Alliance. Moving on to the other ring is Legionnaire's Band. Um, we're going into Phase 2, and I want to say, what, is it 10 days now? 9 days? So, I'm not going to worry about you guys getting an alternative, um, just because you guys can just grab whatever you want. The Viridian Band of the Bear, um, you can grab anything that with strength. If you guys really want an alternative um, and you want to fill all your slots, just get any band that has strength in it. Um, other than that, you're going to get the Legionnaire's Band, and for the Alliance, you're going to get the Protector's Band. This is from the PvP vendor, um, so go ahead and grab that when you guys are able to, and you have enough currency to obtain such things. Moving on to the Trinkets, we're going to go with the Insignia of the Horde. Obviously, every Twink should have a Trinket to get you out of those stuns, slowing effects, etc. Um, obviously, Insignia of the Alliance if you're Alliance, Insignia of the Horde if you're Horde. Um, pretty simple. That's what you're going to be rocking. Um, for the other one, Rena Grandmaster. If you guys have not able to even get one chest, um, the Minor Recombobulator from Engineering is going to be your second go until you guys can obtain the Arena Grandmaster. Phase 2 is around the corner, guys, so don't worry about not having your trinket, your ring, or your necklace. This will come um, with time being. Just make sure you're a grunt rank, which is about 2k uh, rank points. So that's how you obtain the necklace. And like I said, same with the ring and the neck. You just got to get the Orson Gulch rep grinds. Um, moving on to your bow is the Venom Strike. Uh, my opinion, I'd rock this over anything. It's just got solid DPS output plus that Venom Shot increase for a chance of nature damage. It's just real nice overall compared to the other weapons that there is out there. Um, you're going to put plus 3 damage on it. There was a rumor that you couldn't put plus 7 on because of a level cap requirement. Um, and it wasn't able to like actually be used properly. Um, I'm just going to follow with that rumor. Um, I haven't really tested it myself. But if you can't get the plus 7... Do plus three scope on your um, bow slash gun or whatever you're using until you get Venom Strike. Um, Venom Strike is a pretty easy um, grind to get. I think it only took me about five runs to obtain. Um, there is a pretty easy way to grind that. That way you don't have to follow your carrier through the entire dungeon. Um, all you guys really have to do is have your person clear the inside pathway and then walk to the pond that you guys jump down from when you guys kill the... Uh, I think it's the last two bosses in uh, Willing Caverns before you have to kill the Murloc. So just kind of camp in there, have him kill the boss, and then you guys are still able within range to get this loot for the Venom Strike. Pretty easy to grab. Um, that's how I did it personally. But moving on to the weapon is the Glacial Stone. This right here is huge for warriors. Put Crusader on that. And you guys are going to be a walking wrecking stone if you guys use this weapon. Um, this weapon itself is required to be level 18 to start the quest chain to obtain it. It is a pretty long quest chain, so just make sure you guys are careful um, when you guys are doing completing your quest. That way you don't over level yourself and you're um, still within the 19 range. Uh, you typically should have this much experience um, on your XP bar when you guys hit 19. If not that, none. You guys want the most minimal XP as possible when you guys hit 19. Um, for those that are also going with the shield, um, Glacial Stone is going to be your two-hand weapon. And then for your one hand, you're going to go with Shadow Fang and the Arctic Buckler um, for your two shield in one hand the arctic buckler is also a quest chain through level 18 so you guys as a warrior this is why i say it's a little tricky to guys get your gear um you guys have to plan out pretty carefully on how you guys are going to obtain these items and complete your quest obviously you don't want to kill too many things you just want to get your stuff done and ready so 18 this is doable to obtain the buckler the bracers and the weapon all in the same go so don't worry don't stress you guys can obtain everything um, as a level 18 just gotta be careful on how you do it um, with the shadow fang you're gonna want to put fairy weapon uh, fury weapon or life stealing this is on you on what you would want to do personally i would put life stealing on it um it's just a solid enchant to have plus that plus healing for when you're fighting people to regain on health since you guys really don't have much to heal yourselves with uh, if you guys don't have a healer around um, I would personally rock life sting, but if you guys want pure DPS output, free weapon is the way to go, plus 7 on your shield, and you guys are pretty set. You guys should have um, a solid 1433 health with the shield. 
1500 it's a pretty solid warrior um, you guys would be a walking tank if you guys gear this right and know how to play it properly but that's typically what you guys want to do in terms of your gear um, for the ammo um, you guys can actually obtain a pouch it's called the ammo it's like it's a regular ammo pouch that you guys can buy I want to say from the hunter vendors in Orgrimmar um, go ahead and comp that kind of give you guys a little bit of attack speed um, for the Alliance, there's actually a quest that you guys can do um, of the Night Watch. Um, I can go ahead and put that in the description as well, just like how I did with the Rogue video. Um, put those two in there so you guys can kind of see a little bit more and how to obtain those. Uh, but other than that, we're going to move right into the talents. Uh, the talents right here, this is going to be your common set talent build right here um, for DPS, minimum, maximum, whatever you want to call it, DPS output. Uh, it's mainly a rage. Um, build to kind of maintain your rage so you guys have a constant rage pretty much when you're swapping into between builds you have tactical mastery you're able to retain 15 of your mage points uh, rage points when you change stances so pretty huge on what you guys want to do when it comes to rage um, warriors at 19 need rage to even do anything so to maintain all this is very nice you gotta have improved charge um, all the way up that way you guys are getting the maximum amount of rage throughout your charges and then you guys are gonna have improved Heroic, heroic strike um, three out of three it's going to reduce the cost to use this spell in general um, and then you're going to put two into deflection just to have a two percent in your parry chance to kind of help you out with those combat fights that you guys are going to be encountering um, obviously there's other builds that you guys can experiment with but if it were me um, i would constantly be in arms all the time just to maintain my rage you guys could explore you guys could do all kinds of other things there are really other good builds out there but in my opinion the best one is going to be the arms build um, for the rage I mean uh, the rage consumption um, so you guys have the maximum dps output along with the parry chance for defensiveness um, pretty much all you really need to know about your talents um, in terms of macros, go ahead and get into that. We have pretty solid stuff to go over. Um, the shield, this right here is a shield bash macro. So if you guys are in the process of using your two hand, you're fighting and you need a shield bash, get a quick bash out there. Um, this is a good macro to swap into your one hand off hand, um, which is your shield and then do a shield bash right after that. Damn near instant, real nice macro to have for you guys. Um, same with the stance macro um, right here this works with any type of spell that you guys want to do so if you guys want to swap into battle stance and use overpower like I have right here you guys can if you want to swap into a battle stance and use charge all you gotta do is replace overpower with charge you can do this with any spell um, personally I would do this with overpower for those procs and then we have swap and what this is right here is very 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 useful um, in terms of PvP as a 19 twink warrior um, what this is it's a one reversible macro and what I mean by that is what it does is if you're in your two hand and you need to swap into your um, one hand off all right off hand or your shield use this macro right here it'll swap into that and then if you want to swap back into your two hand just click it again and it swaps right back into your two hands so right back where you are this is very, very useful. I highly recommend that everyone that's 19 twinking as a warrior to use this macro. Um, it'll definitely benefit you in the long run. Don't have to use it. This is also here for your guys' help to help benefit you guys. Um, with the Sunder, this is a mouse over Sunder. This can be used pretty much for anything um, as a mouse over macro in general. I use this for Sunder armor. So when you guys want to go and knock up a bunch of Sunder Armors on your FC and while you're damaging somebody. Or if you guys want to use Overpower, you guys can use a Mouse Over Macro for Overpower and use it on somebody else. Very useful macro to use as a warrior um, when it comes to Mouse Over nonsense that you guys can really get into. Um, there really isn't much to warriors that I personally can give knowledge to if that makes sense um considering the fact i did play a 19 warrior back in vanilla um, for those who have seen the video of me recovering that account and um actually playing it on retail i did play a warrior he wasn't geared to the like brim like this guy is right now but he did have a decent amount of gear um, i think he still has like 5,000 bullets in the bank which is pretty nice to see kind of look back on but um 
yeah this is pretty much all you guys really need to know in terms of a warrior um in terms of gear what to get um how to get it and the um, gear customization that you guys can have to optimize your guys's gameplay uh, but this is pretty much all i have left for you guys um, just like i mentioned before if you guys have any type of recommendations on classes i'm going to go ahead and leave it in the comment down below be sure to comment on that um, i usually do the first person to kind of comment and what they want to see first um, last comment on the video was a warrior so here's the warrior video so if you guys want to see something different um, comment down below let me know what you guys want to see if i did leave anything out also, drop that down in the comment section below. I'll be sure to update it into the description. I know I did that with the ammo pouches of last video. Someone mentioned that. I knew I forgot something. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm doing the same thing with the warrior. But like I said, I'm pretty sure I covered just damn near about everything that you guys need to know. Um, but other than that, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you really like to give it a favorite, commenting is free as well as subscribing. Hope you guys learned something new today. Um, it's been Resto, guys. See you guys next time.